we are someone who is a little bit afraid of the invertebrates. Yes. Okay, so <laughs> we're gonna have our producer come no. out here. He's gonna come out here. Just use here. one finger, have a few. everyone, I'm Singy from Mandai Wildlife Group. Welcome back to another episode of Hashtag AMA. Ask Mandai anything where you ask, we answer. We are now at the back of house of Fragile Forest at Singapore Zoo and we are honoured to have Dalvin from the Herpetology and Invertebrates team with us today. Hi everybody. Chingy, do you yes. not realise mm -hmm. there are some invertebrate friends between us? I see one, there's another one in the middle and a green one that looks like a leaf over here. There's actually two more. Is it this one? I didn't notice this. I see some spiky thing over here. Yes, yes. it's a very large specimen. This is the giant prickly stick insect. One interesting fact about all of them, they're actually all female. And for some of these specimens over here, the males have rings and they can fly really well. So if I were to bring them out, they'd probably mm -hmm. be around the room, not oh. here. <laughs> Alright, the first question. How are you so chill with a millipede on your shoulder? Okay, I got a secret to tell you, Chingy. I actually have a millipede with me. <laughs> One interesting fact about the millipedes is that they can live up to 8 years. It takes a lot of care hmm. from the team to get them to this size. They are like my little masseuse. They Ooh. give me a massage with their many, many legs. Do you know how many legs does this millipede have? No, I haven't counted. <laughs> okay, have a go. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, it does feel like... A very gentle massage. So what do you think of the term creepy crawlies? I've used the term creepy crawlies as well. You've seen these creepy crawlies, they're not as creepy. Maybe they can be your friend. We're definitely friends for life over here. <laughs> because invertebrates are really, really nice creatures. Mm -hmm. One of the main things they do is they play a very important food source to other animals. Mm. Invertebrates are nutritionally very good in their diet. Recently, we've been feeling black soldier flies to our bee eaters in bird paradise. If you happen to be there, you might be able to see an excellent display of the bee eaters hunting down the black soldier flies. So how do you overcome the fear of handling crocodiles? Previously, I would run away. I was not a very insect person. In this very room, at the shelf behind me, mm -hmm. we had the hissing cockroaches in a large tank and there was literally thousands of them in that one tank. Okay, that's Scary thing in their <laughs> jeans. I was supposed to remove all of the poop from mm -hmm. the tank and we do so with a dustpan and I said, okay, leave me here. She's really scraped everything from one side to the other side uh -huh. and all I had to do was remove it and bag it and put it into the freezer. So handling one cockroach is very different from putting your hand yes. in a tank of thousands of cockroaches. So that took some time. I freaked out at times when a cockroach climbed up my fingers. I think the very important thing to understand mm. and that really helped me mm. is that these cockroaches aren't like the cockroaches that we see outside. Madagascan hissing cockroach is a forest species. They mm. play very important roles in the forest as a detritivore. The detritivores like the cockroaches, the earthworms, even our giant millipede over here, mm. they are very, very important decomposers. How do you tend to the 28,000 of them in a day? Firstly, we clean the tank. Can you imagine the amount of poop? The sick insects also lay eggs. Mm. So we have to clear the eggs, sort the eggs and do a count on them. So sometimes they get swept in as well because they're at the bottom and they're tiny. Then we just it? pick them out slowly. Oh. So it's very gentle. It's just very tiny dustpans. And mm. how do you count or sort them every day? There's so many. So we have a system. Every tank has a data card. And on data card, you write down how many hatched on a day, how many died on a day. So at the end of the month, the mm -hmm. keepers will collate all of this information ah. and it goes onto an Excel sheet where we evaluate the sustainability of the collection. And we are constantly monitoring it and we are pretty good at estimating them. Okay. But we don't rely on estimate. They have to look carefully inside the tank and count one by one. Yeah. Wow, that's really a lot of effort. Employ me, maybe I can come and <laughs> for you. How has working with them changed the way you see bugs at home? <laughs> <laughs> so what do you do when you see a cockroach in your house? The disclaimer here is mm -hmm. that the cockroaches that we have at home are pests. The cockroaches that you normally see at home are the American species, the German species, they are carriers of bacteria, germ. So I admit that I kill cockroaches at home. But everything else, I try and push out of the house. Mm. Do we actively breed invertebrates? Yes. We continuously, actively, mm -hmm. every day breed invertebrates. I'm very proud to say that we have a fully sustainable population of invertebrates wow. over here. So all of our invertebrates 
are bred in our facility, with the exception of butterflies, which you get from a sustainable source. You're sitting right here uh -huh. in one of our breeding rooms. And this is where the magic happens. At the same time, we use this area for observation, mm. research areas. So, is yeah. there any species that is difficult to breed? Some species are no longer difficult. We okay. figured it out. Wow. Um, so initially, the Krisangis were actually quite hard mm -hmm. to manage and they're doing so much better now. The jungle nymphs as well, we didn't have a fully sustainable population about six, seven years ago. Now we do have a fully sustainable population. So are there any insects or invertebrates that you're still afraid of or can't get used to? I think it will still have to be the centipede. So centipedes are really, really fast uh -huh. and they've got venom as well. So they give a very, very painful bite. Mm. So in general, I would tell everybody to stay away from centipedes, but they're really fast. I think I have become more and more confident with the centipede. Okay. But yeah, I would never handle a centipede with my hands. And I will advise nobody to do so as well. So how do you actually help people overcome their fear of invertebrates? Handling them plays a part. Even just having a feel of an invert, mm. if you are afraid of them, just seeing how they feel like, how smooth they are, and then, like, most of the time they are like a branch or they play it like this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put her back up here. So explaining uh, their roles, how they eat, what they consume, what they do for the environment plays a part. So, I mean, I'm not afraid of invertebrates. I think they are pretty cool. But we have someone who is a little bit afraid of the invertebrates. And Are you sure? Yes. We're going to have our producer come up here. Just, just Use here. one finger, have a feel. Okay, over here. No. Just have a feel like this. How does it feel like? Just like a leaf, right? <laughs> <laughs> Good job! Hello. <laughs> Do invertebrates try to escape? Invertebrates do try to escape from time to time. I'll stick insects. Ah. Especially the young ones, the nymphs, when you oh, open yes. it, then they try and get out. So immediately when you open, you have to be on standby. You will see like 10 princes sitting insects trying to get out. Then, oh, no. then you have to be really fast to gather them back in. Yeah, so our keepers have managed and figured out ways on how to handle these. And also our tanks are quite special. We Ooh. do have multiple doors, so we oh. can open it at different areas. Nice. What are your thoughts on insect for human consumption? Insect feed is really, really interesting. For example, do you know that cockroaches, some of them produce milk? The milk is more nutritious than cow's milk and even goat's milk. Scientists have actually applied it as a form of superfood. Ooh. Not actually drink the cockroach. Oh, oh, I thought yeah. you were supposed to They're right. trying to replicate it replicate by understanding it. it. Even their poop is nutritious. Whose poop? Their poop? <laughs> their poop, yes, yeah, exactly. The fast meat so weird. In Singapore, during the kampung days, uh -huh. a lot of people used to keep all of these stick insects as pets. They would collect all of their breasts, which is a mixture of their poop and mm -hmm. sometimes their eggs and the, the broken down leaves. Mm -hmm. They collect all of it and they boil it and make it into tea. It's supposed to be really, really good and helps you with constipation and diarrhea as well. Also been studied, it's high in vitamin E. Have you tried it before? No. No, I haven't tried. <laughs> Maybe one day. One day? I mean, I have all of the resources. <laughs> and then you start to root <laughs> your over here. Alright, so is there anything interesting that you have learned from taking care of these? 90 over species of invertebrates. We are currently studying the development of the Krisangi leaf insect over here. We recently found that they are able to make calls. But we are still monitoring our specimens to look at their growth rate. Beyond that, we are also doing studies on food waste processing invertebrates mm. like the hissing cockroaches as well as the black soldier flies. The Krisangi, I want to know whether they got different calls. Like the cockroaches have seven different calls. I want to see if I put a male and a female Kusangi together, does one of them produce a meeting call to attract the other one? Why are invertebrates so important and why do you think we should care about insects? If you take the invertebrates away, everything will start to crumble bit by bit. Mm. So whether they are pollinators, they are decomposers, they are food source for other animals. They are helping even the plants and the other animals survive and in return us as well. Mm. Alright, thank you Delvin for answering all the questions today. So for those who are not yet convinced that invertebrates are amazing friends, what do you have to say to them? Just go out and make an invert your friend. That's right, go for walks, come down to fragile forests and maybe meet some of our keepers and make all these your friends. And with that, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Hashtag AMA, Ask Mandai Anything, where you ask, we answer. Bye-bye!